Farm RPG, Bellogan here. Today we're gonna to talk about the vineyard and wine versus the bank. What is a better bang for your buck? So to start off with, we're gonna look in the game where the vineyard and the wine cellar are. This is in the library in the wiki about farming. Uh, once you hit level 25, you can build the vineyard. And then the vineyard starts producing grapes daily. It costs, I believe, 2,000 to get started with your first grape production, and then it goes up 2,000 from there uh, as an increase for every additional grape you produce daily. And then when you have 100 of those, you can put those in a bottle to create a bottle of wine, and then you can put those in a wine cellar once you've built it. Once grapes, uh, or once wine is in the wine cellar, it starts gaining value every single day. So if I come here into my wine cellar, we'll see I've got several bottles in here. They start out worth 1,000 silver at zero days. Uh, at 12 days, I'm at 2,728. So let's take a quick look in a lovely spreadsheet about how the wine progresses in its growth curve for how quickly it produces value. And then we're going to do a comparison of what is really a better investment of your money, sticking it in the bank or investing in wine. All right, we've changed gears here to our spreadsheet in Excel, and let's look at how wine grows. I've got that modeled here on the left. Now, initially, I just started recording this for three or four days, uh, and then kind of figured out what the growth was. So in my column A, we just have the number of days as we increase, and then we've got my value. So, you know, day zero worth 1,000, 1,001 on day one, 1,008 day two. You look at the increase, it goes, uh, it increases by one after the first day, seven, 13, 16, and you notice a pattern that it is increasing by a value of, um, or the rate of increase is increasing by a value of six. So I come over here and look at my wine I've actually recorded. Um, you take your, your derivative of your derivative and so forth, and you come down to your, your rate of your rate of change is at six uh, per day that that goes up. So day one increases by one, then seven, then 19. And well, that value changed by six, then by 12, then by 18, and each of those was changing by six every single day. So if we come and look at that um, long term, I can scroll down here and we get the value of our wine as it goes up over a number of days. Once you hit about 100 days um, or 101 days, that's where we cross the 1 million silver mark for how much your wine is worth. You can come down here to about a year, 365 days, just about there. And it is worth 48, so just a little bit shy. So just after a year, it'll be worth roughly 50 million for a single bottle of wine. So I put that on a plot over here for you to see. Now I put this on a logarithmic scale because it makes it easier to see on the low end. The top end here is um, just about 60 million at nearing 400 days. Um, you can see that at about 100 days, we hit that 100 million mark. And so really when you stick a bottle of wine in, you can pick how long do you want to wait and see uh, you know, when do you want to start selling off these bottles of wine? So the question comes up, what is a better investment? Sticking your money in the bank or using it to invest in growing a whole bunch of wine? So I've done a comparison of that over here in my spreadsheet. And I've got two values of the bank. One of those is your interest rate at 4%. So that has the two premium perks unlocked. Um, I also have the base value of 1% if you don't have those unlocked. Now over here in these cells, I'm looking at the total cost of uh, producing that many grapes per day, how much your initial investment is. And essentially what we're gonna do, and I'm ignoring the cost of building the uh, the vineyard and the wine cellar up front, which I think those were 500,000 each or something of that nature. Tossing that out the window. But to get your production up to 100 grapes per day, you're putting in basically 10.2 million silver to do that. Um, I started looking at comparing 100 to 200 as well, and the total cost additionally there is about 30 million uh, silver to, to increase that. Um, but it became pretty obvious even just with the lower cost, zero to 100, what was gonna be worth it. Now you could do less, you could say, hey, maybe I'm only growing one grape per day, one grape per day. But then you're only building a bottle of wine every 100 days, so you've got a long time to wait. Uh, until you actually start uh, can start earning money. So we're just doing this quick analysis to see, you know, if I've got 10 million silver sitting around, is it better to throw it in the bank and wait, or is it better to grow a vineyard with the growth curve and see how that goes? So we follow this, um, and I start with this 10 million investment here, uh, the bank at 4%. We also do the same thing, the 10.2 million, 10 million at 1%. And then I've got my wine grown after a day. And we can kind of scroll down and see how this goes. So initially, obviously, you've got a lot more silver in the bank because you didn't spend it. 
Now, the other thing to consider, um, when I'm looking at the value of wine, I'm not tracking a single bottle. What I'm tracking is the value of all the wine that you have produced to that day. So when I come here on day two, I'm adding in that bottle that has been in there for a day, well actually two days, that's really a day ahead, but that's all right. Um, and the bottle of the day before. So I'm not counting day zero, I'm counting one day of growth, two days of growth on, on these bottles. So technically this is actually a day ahead. Um, but what that does, it tells you if you liquidated all of the wine that you have, what is the total value of all of that wine um, that we have in there? So we scroll down. Um, let's come down to the 100 day mark where we know that a single bottle is worth about a million. And we'll see if this follows up. All right. So I'm looking at my spreadsheet here and we're adding in something different than I thought I was. All right, I have an error in my spreadsheet, so we're gonna come and correct this. So right now this is only adding in my current day and the first day. So let's go and get that fixed. We're gonna pause this and come right back. All right, we're back. So we had a quick correction to uh, the spreadsheet here. <laughs> so I'm correctly totaling the value of all your wine, not just the current day and your first day that you threw in. So what we're looking at is, is there a point where the total value of all my wine catches up to the, the bank interest rate? And we can look at that both at the bank at 4% and the bank at 1%. So I'm gonna start scrolling down here. I'm gonna come down to um, about 100 days. Uh, we passed that. Here's 100 days right here. So at 100 days, if I had taken all of my silver and thrown it in the bank uh, at a 4% interest rate, I would have had 476 million silver, whereas my wine value is 23 million. And at 1%, I'm at 27 million. So we're getting close to catching up um, to that 1% interest rate before we catch it. And if you watch the numbers, we actually start to cross that value right here around day 106. So what that's telling you is if you only have a 1% interest rate on your bank and you stick your wine in here um, for 106 days, you're gonna beat the bank at a 1% interest rate. We are a long ways of beating that off on the 4% interest rate. And so if we keep scrolling down, we can start to see if these numbers are going to um, converge. And it looks like they are going to here. Let's see, I'm looking at my values here, comma ones. We start to catch up, not quite yet. Because here I'm sitting at, what, 200 million, here I'm at 9 billion, roughly, so keep scrolling down on my wine. Meanwhile, my bank is growing like crazy. Hey, I need to make this column a little wider. Imagine that. All right. So here down on day 253, we finally hit uh, a billion silver. Um, but I'm 192 billion silver for that in, uh, in uh, the bank with that 4% interest rate. Now my 1% interest rate, notice I'm still a heck of a lot lower on that. I'm uh, only 123 million, not even at a, at a billion yet. Um, so continuing this on, you look at it, and um, you know, to me, it doesn't look like we're ever really going to catch that. Come out here to 399 days. I'm up to six billion silver um, after about a year for the total value of um, all of my wine, um, but my bank investments up to about 58 billion in silver. So what that tells you is, if you don't have any of the bank percentage perks. Um, and you don't plan to ever get them, uh, then it could be, if you're patient enough, a better value to stick that 10 million into wine and let it grow. And the longer you let it grow, the more it's gonna be worth. Eventually you have a single bottle you can sell that starts to recover a lot of these costs. You could sell one every single day if you're producing that many. But if you've got the 4% interest rate uh, on the bank, the growth curve of that just drastically outperforms um, sticking any of that money into the wine cellar. So is it worth it still to put your money in the wine cellar? Eh, you know, it's something to do. You uh, get achievement points and gold for building the wine cellar and the vineyard. So, you know, it's not as good of a return as what you get on the bank, but uh, it's still kind of fun and part of the game. So 
just uh, an interesting way to dig in and look at the stats and uh, just let you be more informed for how you'd like to invest your silver. You know, at the end of the day, there's no wrong way to play. It's all about what you like and what you enjoy and what you want to do. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.